Now we're going to generally look at three tools and see how each one of those three tools works and then see how we might use those three tools together to improve each other. Meaning that if you try to rely on only one of those three tools, regardless of which of the three you pick, you're going to be severely limited in what you can do. But if you learn what all three tools do and how they can work together, where one little part might need one of the tools and the other part of your image might need another tool, and if you use them all together, they become much more powerful. And so we're going to start looking at them. So we just need an image to work on. I just happened to open kind of a random image almost uh, to work with because it doesn't really matter what we're looking at when we look at just the concept of how these tools work. And so let's see, there's a thing that needs to be retouched out, that white whatever it is. I want to get rid of it. We have many different options we can use. We already know that I could select it. I can go to the edit menu, choose fill, and that's where we found content aware. We know there's a keyboard shortcut for that. It was shift delete. And then if I press return, it's the same as pressing uh, OK. And that is something I would try very frequently, but you'll find it works best when the area you're attempting to retouch does not contain overly critical um, detail, meaning that if I put the wrong rock in, it wouldn't matter. Or if I put the wrong cloud in, it wouldn't matter. It's not like a face where if I put an eye in where there should be a nose, you'd instantly know and it would be so wrong there'd be no way of even considering that. But if it's something like this dirt, then the thing like content to wear fill, it's going to work great in general. When it's something where it doesn't need a really exact kind of content there, uh, where if it was off a little bit, it wouldn't matter. Having said that, sometimes it does an amazing job when you do need some specific detail. If I come up here to these areas where we have these, uh, what are these called, stanchions? Uh, well, here I have some layers already in this file. I'm going to get rid of them because I didn't describe how those were made, so I can't use them. Uh, let's just see what we could use here. We'll use two different tools here. The first one is we can try out using the uh, one we have been, which is the uh, it's known as Content Aware Fill. Uh, I need to select an area though for Content Aware Fill, and I could manually select it again like this. Usually you go just the tiniest bit outside of the object. The only problem is most of the time I try to go over the whole thing, but that's mainly if you're using something that has the word heel attached, that I'd have to care that this blue thing is, is there. Uh, but let's just try it. Not too bad. And then we could do the next one. Sometimes though I don't feel like in making selections. Just sometimes the process of making selections is not convenient or just not what I feel like doing. So there's a different tool that is going to try to do something similar to this, uh, but you apply it in a different way, and that would be the, this guy which is the spot healing brush. Now it does have the word heal attached to it. And I mentioned something earlier and that is anytime you have something with the word heal in the name, it means blend into brightness and color of surroundings, of whatever touches this area. And what that means is it's very important for me to paint over the entire thing I want to get rid of and not do what I just did here where I got rid of only one of those stanchions. Because otherwise if I stop, in the middle of this blue bar, it's going to try to blend in with it. Uh, right at the end where the, the area that I've worked with stops. So I'm going to paint over the whole thing. When I do this, I'm using the spot healing brush and it just gives me a brush. I'm going to click on the image. I'm going to drag over what I want to cover. And I'm not going to like stop right here and let go because it would try to blend into the blue thing on the edge of what's here because it blends all the way around. So I need to make sure that I go all the way across like that. And now I can let go and it can attempt to do it. And if it messes up, I just get a smaller brush and I paint over that smaller area where it messes up and I can try to fix it. But this particular image needs a little bit more specific detail where putting in just generic detail is not good enough. Because here there's, for instance, a straight line that needs to maintain being straight. 
So it's not always going to do the best job. So let's look at the three general retouching tools, how they work, and then see how we might tackle something like those stanchions that were there using three tools, not just trying to do one. The three tools we're going to look at are the clone stamp tool, the healing brush, which looks like a band-aid, and the spot healing brush. And it's a matter of when should we choose each one of those and uh, when to work with them. So let's take a look. So first off, if you were to use the clone stamp tool, the clone stamp tool simply copies from one area and puts it somewhere else. And that's all it does. So that means I need to first tell it where to copy from. And so let's say I'm going to just copy from over here on the right side. Option click, alt clicking in Windows is how you do that. You cut somewhere else and you apply it. And there is no effort to get it to blend in. I just happen to have copied from an area that is appropriate in brightness. But had I copied from like up here, option click, and applied it down here, it's not going to do anything to try to get that to blend in. It's up to me to do all the work. That means it's up to me to think about the area that I'm copying from to ensure that it's the proper brightness, it's the proper uh, color, it has the proper kind of detail in it, and I need to make sure that the brush that I'm painting with has a soft enough edge that I can't see exactly where I stopped uh, painting. But here, if you look at my end result, I can see exactly where I stopped because I was using a relatively hard edge brush. If I choose undo by typing command Z, I could have created this with a softer edge brush. I'll come over here and see my hardness was at 75 in that case. Could have brought it way down. And then when I did this, at least I'd have a softer edge where you wouldn't see exactly where the edge is. But still, the type of detail that I was copying from wasn't quite appropriate, so it uh, doesn't look good. So anytime I use the clone stamp tool, know that everything has to be right. You need bright brightness, the right color, the right detail, and you need to be careful what kind of brush you're using, how soft the edge is. Now those things are not true when you use the other two tools we're going to use. So let's look at, next, the healing brush. With the healing brush, the only thing you're copying is texture, or you could say detail. What you're not copying is color or brightness. Sounds kind of weird. You might not completely understand what I meant by that, but I can show you what I mean. If I copy from the clouds up here, everything about the clouds is wrong to be used down here, correct? Wrong color, wrong brightness, wrong detail, everything's wrong. But when I apply it, anything with the word healing attached will try to match the brightness and color of the surroundings. So when I let go, we don't have the color of clouds. What we have is the detail of clouds, the texture, the details, the variation in brightness, whatever word you use for what's in there right now. The color and the brightness comes from the surroundings because anything with the word healing attached means match what's just on the edge of, of where I applied this. I'll choose undo and I'll do that one more time. So when I'm painting like this with anything with the word healing attached, it's looking at the exact edge of where I'm painting, looking all the way around and trying to match that brightness okay? and that color. Now that can cause some problems if I try to do something like this. I don't know why I would do this, but we'll We'll see it happen. Look at what's on the area kind of above this. It's dark stuff, right? And look at what's down below. It's lighter and it's brown stuff. Well, this is going to confuse Photoshop quite a bit. It's, it's going to get a headache. And because what I'm telling it to do is to put this detail, this texture, and this variation in brightness that I've just painted in, in there, but then get it to blend in with those surroundings. Well, that means it's going to try to make the transition between that dark area and the browner area just as smooth as those clouds. And when it tries, it's going to look like a weird 
thing where it's trying to it's trying to make the transition from that edge to that edge just as gradual as the transition was in the clouds from one edge to the other edge of the the area and it just doesn't look right and that's why anytime we use the word healing we don't want to come up and kiss the edge of something where it just touches the edge like that because it's going to pick up that color and now it's going to try to blend that color into what's on all the other edges, making it look just as smooth as those clouds in transition, which means it's going to have to use quite a distance to try to make it look smooth, and it looks weird. What it really needs, if I'm going to retouch that edge, is an abrupt change in brightness from what I'm copying from. So I need to find another area that has an abrupt change in brightness. So let's see if there's an area other than what's right here where I might be able to use it. Well, right there's an abrupt change in brightness. Do you see where it goes from dark to light? I don't know if it's the right angle or not, but let's just see if it is. I'm going to copy from right here. I'll use a smaller brush. And then I'll come over here to use it. It's not the right angle, though. If I could rotate that within there, and I can, by the way. I just haven't shown you how yet. And it'll take us a while to get to that point. So don't, I, I, can't show you right now. But if that was rotated to the right direction, and I got a small enough brush, and I got that transition to be right where it was supposed to be, right in there, I would be able to use that source and get it to look right without getting that weird um, thing where it takes that color and just spreads it across the area. I don't know if you know, completely understand what I'm talking about here. But for now, I'll use it up here because it lines up a little better. Let me touch out that little area. I'm not going to get a weird transition with that as much. Although I, did, I hit this thing at the bottom, which is... I alt-clicked up top, up here, to say I want to copy from there. So when you're in the healing brush, you do need to tell it where to copy from. Yes, you do. Um, but as I go through this, you'll get a better sense for what I'm talking about. Right now, it feels somewhat vague. Uh, but. So with the healing brush, the healing brush acts a lot like the clone stamp tool where you tell it where to copy from, it puts it somewhere else, but then after it's done putting it there, it looks all the way around the edge and says, we gotta make the brightness and color match. And so you gotta be careful with what you're copying from. Let's go to the spot healing brush. The spot healing brush is just like the normal healing brush. The only difference is you don't have to tell it what to copy from it figures that out for you. So if I want to get rid of this, I simply paint over it and let go. And it looks at the surroundings and says, uh, I'll pick somewhere, and it copies. So that anytime you have your, your um, I'm forgetting the name of this tool, the spot healing brush, you don't have to tell it where to copy from. It's the tool I would love to use for everything because all I gotta do if I want to get rid of something, it's just paint over it and let go, and it figures it out for me. And that's great. I'll start with that tool to come in here and retouch out stuff because if it works, it's going to be next to no effort because it tries to figure out where, um, what to copy from. Now, we already know from what I've shown you before that it'll mess up if when I paint, I bump into the edge of my document. You remember how it tries to blend in with things. So over here on the side, to get rid of these guys, I'm assuming it's going to mess up. It's not terrible, but it's a little bit too dark on the edge. I'll choose undo, and if this looks like odd detail here, if I zoom up, it is because this was a stitched panorama, and I filled the empty parts, and that just happens to be what it filled in. Uh, so that's artificial content on the edge uh, after stitching a panorama. But if I wanted this to work better here, this is when we want to start using tools together. What I want to do is just put in what should be on the edge of the photo, just on the edge. doesn't matter how far over it extends. And that's when I go to the clone stamp tool, the thing that just blatantly copies. I'll copy from right here. Can you see where my mouse is right there? Let me zoom up a little closer and make it easier for you to see. I'm going to option click right there and I'm going to apply it over here. Now that is the right kind of material, the right brightness and everything to have there, so that's going to help it. I need to do the same thing all the way up though until I get to the sky. So I'm going to copy from part of the sky, and I'm just going to put it in here on the edge. Then we should have trees coming across, so I'll copy from some trees. 
I'm going to get a smaller brush here. There, I'll put some trees in. And then I have to decide what should be in here. Should this extend all the way over there or not? If I want it to, I need to put it there. I'm just trying to get the colors and the brightness over there that it should blend in with. I'm not being overly careful with what exactly is there. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what color should be there. I'll put something random. I might have to fix it later. But now, if I try to use something with the word healing attached, at least it knows the right colors of what to blend into on the edge. Make sense? So I could try to use this. I still don't know that it'll do a great job, but we'll see. I'm assuming we'll have to do this part completely manually. But at least now it shouldn't look overly dark when it's done. But it tried to figure it out, didn't it? We had to help it a little though, in that before it tried to blend in what was on the edge. We put in some artificial stuff on the edge so it knew the right colors, and then it figured it out. If there's some areas that are messed up, just paint over them a second time. And remember three strikes and you're out? Give it a, a try. See? Maybe I don't like that part. Give it another try. Give it another try. And you can always choose undo a few times. Uh, just so you know, you have under the window menu a choice called history. And it will list whatever you've done to your picture. And if you want to go back a few steps, just click on a previous step. You can go back. I personally don't ever have this panel open. I know I can go back all these steps in it, but there's actually a keyboard shortcut that lets you go back, and I screw up so often that I use it so much that I don't want to have this open all the time. I'd rather use a keyboard shortcut, but for those of you that don't remember the keyboard shortcuts, open the history panel and click on previous steps to get back. Here's the keyboard shortcut. Step backward. Step backward, watch the history panel. You see it just went up one, if I go step backward, see it just went, went down another one. It, to go the other direction, which means to reapply things, there's something called step forward. And all it does is it's going in the history panel and it's, click, it's doing the same as what I'm doing right now. That's step forward, here's step back. And this is simply a list of everything I've done to my picture. And so that means I'm getting multiple undos as I go up this list, and I'm reapplying those things as I go down this list. It's just you don't need to stare at the list. You could just use the keyboard shortcuts for these menu commands. So how can I remember the keyboard shortcuts for those menu commands? Well, most people know the keyboard shortcut for undo because it is universal for most programs, and that's Command-Z on a Mac, Control Z in Windows. If you know that keyboard shortcut by chance, just add the other common modifier key. There's only two keys down there, Option and Command, just add the other one. So that means if Command Z is the normal undo, do Option Command Z. You're just adding one key to your undo. Option Command Z. On Windows, that's Alt Control Z. You're just adding one additional key to your undo. And by doing so, you can type it more than one time and go back more than one step. It's exactly like having the history panel open and simply going back in the list. So if you ever see me getting multiple undos, I just, I just say, oh, I'm going to go back a ways. I'm doing Option, Command, Z, Option, Command, Z, Option, Command, Z to go back. All right, so what else do we need to learn before we can start tackling some more difficult things? When you need to get rid of larger stuff, the problem is if you use the spot healing brush, because it blends in with the surroundings, you have to cover up the entirety of that object. Otherwise, it's going to try to blend into the edge of what's left over. And so sometimes that's inconvenient because if I have a huge area to go across to get rid of something, doing it all in one pass just makes it First off, difficult to paint accurately across such a big area, and secondly, it gives the spot healing brush a much greater chance of screwing up. And so the other thing I would mention about using spot healing brush is to break apart large problems into smaller ones. So if I wanted to get rid of these little stanchions that are here, I wouldn't necessarily use the spot healing brush to paint over all of them to begin with. What I would do instead is go to the clone stamp tool and break it apart into smaller problems. So that right here, I'm going to break the stanchion right there. I'll just copy from here. I'm option clicking and I'll sever the stanchion. 
Okay. Then I'll go over here and I'll sever this one. Then I'll go over here and I'll sever this one. I just need to make sure that whatever I sever it with is the proper brightness and color for what should be there if it was already completely retouched out. Come over here, sever this one. So now what I have effectively done is isolated each one so I could paint over just one, let go, and it wouldn't it would not blend into some odd color that is some leftover uh, piece. Does that make sense? We could also break it apart vertically if we needed to. I could possibly pick some unique detail here, like this little edge, copy from it. I just broke that in, into two more smaller pieces. The smaller you break it down into pieces, the easier it is for the spot healing brush to deal with it. You don't have to do this for everything, but whenever you find that what I would do is consider uh, first trying the spot healing brush on the entirety of something, because it just might be fast and easy. I'm going to paint over this entire tower and just see if it disappears. If it does, awesome. But if it doesn't, break it down into little chunks and then try the chunks separately. And you'll find that oftentimes it does a much better job. So I don't know that it's going to do a great job here. I've never tried it on this image, but we'll try little pieces now. I just switched to the spot healing brush. And now to get rid of this bottom, I'll just paint over it. Get rid of this bottom, I'll paint over it. This bottom, I'll paint over it. It messed up there, so I'll try that again. Remember three strikes before I have to try something else. Um, there's another bottom here. I didn't break that one apart. I should have because it will do a much better job if I break it apart. So whenever you get something where you find that you've painted over the entirety of an object, it's not doing a great job getting rid of it, consider chopping it down into little chunks and then just deal with the little chunks. When you break it into the chunks, you just have to make sure that whatever material you're putting in there to break it is the right brightness, the right color, so that when you uh, bump into it with this uh, tool, it can uh, end up with the right uh, result. So I don't know if it'll do good there because there's statues and stuff there. So that's where I would probably have to manually do things because that's where you have specific detail. It's more like a face. If you put a nose where an eye should go, it doesn't look right. The same thing is somewhat true there. But I might come in here and at least get rid of it initially with this and then only come back and fix it where it doesn't look right. Just make sure you cover the entirety until you hit that little gap you made. Oops, I can't see the rest of that. There it is. Then, in order to fix other parts that are in here, if it needs specific detail, you know, where it would look wrong if it put in just a kind of random part of the, of the uh, surroundings, that's when I might switch to the normal healing brush. I get a smaller brush here and like I think right there that didn't quite look right. I'm not sure if you agree or not but not quite right. So I'm looking for something where it has the right brightness relationship meaning that there should be a crack there, a dark crack um, and uh, that kind of stuff. So I'm just looking across here. This looks like it has the same kind of crack. And if you look at the brightness of this brick and the brightness of what's down here, it's not that it has to match this. It's that it shouldn't be like this one here. Do you see how dark the brick is and how light this is? Well, if I apply that over here, it thinks that it needs a transition from dark to light. And it might not look right. So I'm going to copy from right there. Come over here. I get a preview right in my brush. I get it to line up. that. Oftentimes after doing that, I'll go back to the spot healing brush and so that I don't have an exact copy of what came from somewhere else, I'll just come in here and paint over some of the other areas to get it to copy from somewhere else, just to create something that doesn't look exactly like what was on the other side. I don't always have to do that, but it's something I will do on occasion. Uh, so we'd still need to work on this as far as figuring out statues and what could come in there because this is stuff where we'd have to have something overly specific. So what are we learning so far? We're learning anything with the word healing doesn't work good on the edge of a picture. 
if we have something on the edge of a picture, we could use the thing that was called uh, edit fill. There was that choice. Or we could help the healing brush by first putting in some material on the edge so it knows what to blend into, then try it out. If the healing brush does not do a great job on a big area, break it up into smaller areas. Tackle the smaller areas individually. It'll usually do better when it messed up on a large uh, one. And we use the normal clone stamp tool when uh, we need to just put some material on the edge of our photo to, to get the material that the brush needed to uh, blend into. Or if everything fails us, meaning all the other tools that have all the help built in, meaning the things called healing and things called content aware fills, uh, the fancy stuff just breaks down and does not help, then we have to manually use that tool.